Hi there, my oily friends. I'm Melissa Miller, and I'm going to share with you today a few tips for using your oils in the summertime. So what are the most commonly used oils in the summer? What are some um, ways that are going to make your summer more, more enjoyable? So here we go. Let's get started. So first, it's, it's very interesting that summertime, most people diffuse less probably because we have the windows open and we're in and out a lot. Um, but there are some really fun summer diffuser blends. So I love, I, I love to just Google search for doTERRA diffuser blends and see what I come up with. So this one, I just searched doTERRA summer diffuser blends. And here's what I found from doTERRA from a few, a few years ago. Now, my favorite one on here is the freshly cut grass. And it really does smell like freshly cut grass. So it is fun. I love to like, if I can hear someone mowing the lawn, why does that smell so good? I don't know. But if I can hear someone mowing the lawn and you know, we have the windows closed and the AC on, I'll put that one in the diffuser and it just makes me feel like, oh, I'm outside there, but not in the heat. It's nice. All right. So you can make your own sunscreen. How awesome is that? So this one is, um, so just a DIY that you're going to do in a, you're going to melt it down in a double boiler. I don't have the directions on here, so I'm just going to say them. So you melt them like the oils and the beeswax in a double boiler. Oh, I should say olive oil and coconut oil, not the essential oils. And you can mix it with like a, like a popsicle stick or something like that, that, um, that you can throw away after because obviously that beeswax anything that it gets stuck to is just so hard to get off um and i like to do it like in a, a glass dish that seems to be like a glass pyrex put it in the water and boil it down and melt it down that way you can also use like uh reuse like a tin can or something that you're recycling and just pull it out and wash it and, and use it for that anyway Okay, so you're gonna melt those down and then you're gonna um, pour in the zinc oxide and the essential oils towards the end. Oh, I'm saying this wrong. Okay, one second. Zinc oxide helichrysum. Yes, okay, sorry. So I don't know why those are not listed at the end. If they're not, I need to redo this graphic. But so everything else you'll do at the beginning because the shea butter you need to melt down as well. But at the end, after it's all melted, take it off the heat. You can let it sit for a few minutes so that it cools down a little bit. And then you're gonna put those two things in. You don't wanna expose the essential oil to, or, or the zinc oxide to extreme heat because that'll, that'll compromise them. So just let it cool for just a few minutes and then add those in and then stir them. And this should make about two pint-sized jars. It says to, to store in a cool place and use it within six months. So. Um, other oils that have SPF in them are Arbor Vitae and Sandalwood. Did not know that. Anyway, so I have never, I always, disclaimer here, I've never made this actual sunscreen recipe. I've heard it's great, but I have never personally used it. What I have done though, is I will add helichrysum to my lotion, like my facial lotion or my body lotion, and I'll use that as a sunscreen. And it does work. It doesn't last as long as a, you know, typical whatever um, sunblock that I'm going to put on, but it probably lasts about half as long as I would with my other one. So with this one, let's see, the SPF is around 30 for this recipe. Um, yeah, that's probably right. And you know what? I would probably say that's probably what I have too. When I put some, when I just add helichrysum to my lotion and put it on there, I would say it's probably SBF 30. So I just need to reapply, right? That's always the trick with some sunblock. Anyway, so there's that. If you're into making your own sunblock so that you're not exposing your body to toxins and stuff, that's, this is a great way um, to eliminate some of those. Okay. So when you're hot outside, cooling spray, I love this stuff, especially if you're outside, like at a waiting for a parade or something like that. This one is the best or working in the yard in the garden. I love to use it in the garden because then I can spray it on my plants too, if I need to as a bug repellent. Um, I keep a little bottle of it mixed up right by the door. So when we're headed out, somebody can grab it, spray it on the back of your neck, uh, right next to the bug spray that we have there. So this is a good, it's a good recipe. So it's about 10 drops of peppermint per two ounces of water, or sorry, per ounce of water. 
and you could do spearmint too if you wanted to, um, or instead of peppermint, you mix or both, whichever you prefer. Okay, so after sun spray, this is a family favorite for us. So this recipe, it calls for aloe vera juice. So not aloe vera gel, aloe vera juice. And you can buy that Amazon health food store, whatever, a place like that. So we keep this one mixed up all the time in a little spray bottle and in with the little tote with the sun blocks and whatever else we have in there, <laughs> um, bug sprays. And, and some people like to keep this in the refrigerator because it adds extra cooling effects if it's cool, right? It makes it feel even better on that sunburn. Anyway, love this stuff and I swear by it. We've been using this for years and it is absolutely amazing. It does not, um, it helps pull the red out. It, it helps, you know, if there's any way that you can save your skin and not have the peeling and whatever, then this is gonna work for you. Um, if you don't have all of these ingredients, then just use lavender. That is, that is definitely, if I was in a pinch anyway, that's what I would do. Um, just add some lavender with some coconut oil or whatever I have to, to put it on there and, and help heal the burn. Anyway, so yeah, so I love this recipe and we use it anytime we have a burn. Okay, so there are oils that are photosensitive, meaning they would make it more likely for you to get a sunburn if you have them on your skin. So basically it's anything with citrus in it. So, because if you look at the single oils here on the left, those are all citrus oils. And then the ones on the right are ones that have those oils in them. So interesting note though, it's not all citrus oils and you'll see cumin is on here, which is very interesting. Anyway, um, so just in the summertime, if you use any of these on a regular basis, just make sure you're not applying it to like your chest area or um, your forehead or something like that, where you'd be you know, pretty likely to get sunburned. I just, if I'm using them, I'll just be like, okay, my wrist or my you know, behind my ears, someplace where it's not typically going to be exposed to sun. But if you're going to be in a tanning bed, then that would be a, that would be another story. So anyway, just, just things to note. All right. So bug sprays. I love to make my own bug spray. I love Terra Shield. It's doTERRA's outdoor blend for helping repel bugs. And it comes in either a bottle and you can mix up your own, or it comes in a ready-made spray. And we use both. Um, probably the one I use the very most is I mix up my own bug spray. And let's see this. So I use this homemade bug spray recipe here on the right, and it's 20 drops of Terra Shield and then 20 drops of another oil of choice, and then fill the rest with witch hazel, which works so much better than water. Witch hazel is also a natural bug repellent, and it's really good for your skin. So win-win there. And this is, I don't have that on there, but that's for about a three ounce bottle. Now I love to use extra lemon eucalyptus to help repel those mosquitoes or lemongrass, another favorite. And now doTERRA, we also have citronella now. I haven't experimented with that one as much, but I really have had lots of luck with the Yemen, lemon eucalyptus. And I use that one more because it repels mosquitoes and ticks. Here in New Hampshire, we have lots of both of those. So. Um, that's why I prefer the lemon eucalyptus over the citronella because citronella works mostly just for the mosquitoes, not as well for the ticks. Um, so anyway, so that's that. So I tend to go lemon eucalyptus and, and lemongrass. Um, and that's probably just out of habit because I've used lemongrass for so many years along with the Terra Shield for extra re bug repellent. And then I just haven't switched since doTERRA has come out with the lemon eucalyptus and the citronella. I just haven't switched over from lemongrass to citronella, but you very well could. Very well could. Anyway, okay, so if you get stung or bitten or whatever by, by a little flying bug or spider for that matter, um, what do you put on it? What to do? What to do? So bees, wasps, hornets, the Roman chamomile is the best one to do. If you don't have it, use lavender. Gnats, mosquitoes, those are lavender. Spiders, basil. Um, if your bug bite is really itchy though, really, Oh, it's just driving you crazy. Put some peppermint on it or some tea tree oil. That really, really helps with the itchies. 
Oh, well, look, and here we go. And here's another anti-itch stick recipe. I forgot this one was coming up. So this one is purify and lavender equal parts in a 10 mil roller and then add it, top it off with fractionated coconut oil. Yep, that works too. So in the summer, it's so important to stay hydrated, right? And sometimes water gets boring, doesn't it? Or you just need a little something to it. So here are a whole bunch of different oils that you can add to your water. So you can mix and match, which is really fun. People like come up with some really fun combinations like tangerine and spearmint or lime and copaiba or, you know, slim and sassy and cinnamon, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So anyway, they're super fun to add just, um, just to make things different, add some oils to your water. So anyway, just make sure you're using glass or stainless steel and not plastic when you're adding oils to your water. Um, and then an interesting note is that spearmint and peppermint will make your water seem cooler. I don't know how it works, but it is cool. It, it really is such a fun thing. All right, so doTERRA sells these cute little keychains for $6.50. You can get them on your back office when you're, in your, um, when you're ordering online. And it comes with these little vials and you just sip it. it has a little carabiner clip and you can like put it on your belt loop if you're going hiking or on your backpack whatever stick it in your purse is where mine usually is and so what would be your top eight oils if you were going to be going okay so here are my top favorite my top eight i wrote them down so i wouldn't forget so lavender um because bug bites minor burns skin irritations Lemon, I love for water for purification if we're needing that. Peppermint, cooling, um, head tension, respiratory support, digestion for stomach troubles because those always seem to happen. Um, deep blue for sore muscles, balance for calming and helping adjust to elevation if that's needed. Um, frankincense for calming and help enhancing any other oil. And then my last one is helichrysum for bleeding and bruising. So yeah, those are, those are my top eight, but like I said, make it according to your family's needs or your personal needs. So you have what you need. All right. So in the summer, I don't know why, maybe because we're outdoor more, we always seem to get more cuts and scrapes and just always of all kinds. Anyway, so this is a great, very generic roller blend that is good for so much more than just owies, like it says. So lavender and malaleuca, which is also tea tree, same thing. Great for cuts, scrapes, blisters. It's good for eczema. It's good for just all kinds of skin issues, right? Anything that, that ails you for skin, this is kind of that magical combination that will help it get over, help you get over it. So lavender is cooling or soothing to the skin and tea tree is gonna help um, just fight those germs. And this is another recipe for a bump and bruise spray. Um, and I should say actually back here, this one is one that we personally always have mixed up and we do use fairly often. Um, Helichrysum is probably our first go-to, but then just because we all respond better to that one, but that one's a close second. So this one is a bump and bruise spray. Now this one I have not made, I've made some very, very similar blends to this, but not this one exactly, but this would be very, very close. Anyway, this would be great. And it's a great idea to put it in a spray bottle. So if, you're, if your child is nervous about you touching their owie or their um, cut or whatever it is, then this would be a great idea. So anyway, so this is good. I like that it has cypress to help support circulation, lavender, geranium, all good for the skin. Frankincense, helichrysum, of course, going to really help that healing. It's a really good recipe right there. And here's one more. This is another just version of, so lavender and tea tree, but they added the cypress in instead. And then you can make this in a spray. And this one also calls for a little bit of salt just to help kill those germs and keep it, keep it clean. Anyway, so it's just spray on three times a day. So it's a good little recipe there. All right, if you don't wanna mix up your own thing, cause some people that's not their jam and that's totally fine. Correct Dex is fantastic. We use lots of this at our house. And so it's just a natural um, essential oil kind of salve ointment already mixed up for you. 
So it has lavender, tea tree. Oh, it's going to tell right there for me. Frankincense, helichrysum, and cedarwood with the other ones. And yeah, anyway, it's just so great. We, I keep this in my purse. We use it for like, I'll use it for a cuticle cream. You can use it for like a chapstick if your lips are really, really bad. You can use it around your nose if your nose is chapped in the winter. But anyway, it goes on any little bug bite that has been broken open or a scabby, whatever, which we seem to have a lot of in the summer at our house. All right, so if you're headed on a road trip this summer, what are some fun essentials that you could take with you? So here are some ideas for you. So past tense, which now no longer comes in a roller, it comes in a 15 mil bottle, but you can mix up your own roller. And it's just so good to put on your neck and your shoulders, you know, when you're driving and you just get so tense and through there. Anyway, so that's a great one to have on hand, obviously. Oh, and they're saying deep blue for that, but um, I would do past tense for that. Deep blue, I honestly would put in my legs. My legs get so achy when I'm just sitting and in the car for a long time. Um, digest then, obviously, for usually we don't eat very well when we're traveling and on the road. Lemon, I love this, to drop under your tongue to wake neurons in the brain when driving at night or long distances. I did not know that until I prepared this class. I thought that was so cool. Um, balance to help keep everybody calm and happy. Peppermint, if you're needing a little pick-me-up or if people are feeling car sick, like it because it's a two for one there. Ginger, also good for motion sickness. If you have kids, Tamer is excellent for motion sickness. I like that one too. And then wild orange in the air too, to help keep everybody happy. You could put the wild orange and the balance together too. That would be great. Anyway, so there are some fun ideas for ones to take if you're having a, a long road trip. And then if you are staying in a hotel, this is a great recipe for um, keeping bed bugs at bay. It is amazing how that is a problem in so many different hotels. It's crazy. Anyway, you can spray this on the bedding and the seats, like the, you know, like the desk chair and whatever else they have, just spray it, spray your suitcase. So it's just um, a small spray bottle. So I would say two to three ounces with 10 drops of Siberian fur or peppermint. So either one, and then just mix it up with water and you're good to go. Okay. If you're flying and you're, you're going across several time zones, it is hard to adjust. Anyway, this is a little jet lag um, mix and it's equal parts of grapefruit, bergamot, and lavender. It says inhale and apply to the back of the neck. So um, here are another, a few other things though that can help with jet lag. Um, slim and sassy taken internally can help with fatigue. Um, peppermint can help with alertness. Serenity can help you obviously sleep more. Rosemary helps fight fatigue and citrus bliss helps with exhaustion. So a few other oils that you can use to help with jet lag. Okay, then these are just a few other really fun um, recipes from the doTERRA, obviously, website. Um, I love this strong lemon raspberry summer water. How yummy does that look? It looks so cute. They have a, anyway, so sliced lemons, raspberries, and then you put in lemon oil and then top it up with water. It just, just looks so pretty and yummy. And then fruit ice cubes, which I think is so ingenious. Whoever came up with this, like, and these little combinations that they have, I just think it's so cute. So just get a silicone ice cube tray would work better, obviously, than plastic because you're going to be using citrus in a lot of these. And so you put one to two drops of essential oils um, in per little ice cube compartment and then add the water and place it in the freezer. You can also put in like, they have little pieces of fruit here, which makes it just look cute and pretty, but you don't have to. Um, I think it would be really fun to just have the essential oils. And then you could just mix it even with a toothpick. I don't, I don't know if you'd have to mix it. I don't think it would matter. But anyway, but check out these combinations like grapefruit and basil. So fun. Oh, and strawberries you could add to lemon. Anyway, they've got some really fun ones in there. Lemon and lime, of course, is a good one. You could add lime and add some mint leaves. That is brilliant. I have tons of mint growing in my yard. That's what I should think is that one. That'd be really fun. Anyway, so just some really, really fun ideas there. And that'd be a fun one for kids to make, I think, too. Anyway, so that's it. That's all I have. And I hope that you have a wonderful summer. Obviously, comment, message me. 
whatever with any questions you have. I'm happy to help you on your oil journey, however I can. Okay, have a great day.